Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, we're going to continue where we left off yesterday, um, dealing with uh, Elon and Abdon, uh, the line of Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful for the time that we have here this morning as we open your word together. We invite your Holy Spirit to speak to us, to bring a power of conviction in our lives, and that it can lead us to repentance and confession of our sins, that we can see our need of you, our dependency upon you in all things, and we pray, Lord, for one another. We know the struggles that people face are not always seen. We know that our own struggles are not often known to others, and um, that often we can be judged unfairly um, because people don't understand the circumstances in our lives. And we pray, Lord, that we can have the wisdom uh, to encourage others instead of tearing them down as they're, they're struggling to overcome their natures. Help us to be witnesses to all around us. May your Holy Spirit Go before us, may your angels watch over us, and may you attend us in this meeting, correcting errors and understanding, and that you can give us light for our, our feet. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning again, everyone. So, um, yesterday we had... Uh, it was a good study. In some ways, it was kind of a, a review just of how we put these lines together. And um, so we had completed at least the dates of Elon, uh, how it relates to our lines. And then we're going to look at Abdon. So with Elon, we didn't have a lot of information. We basically just had where we placed it and why we decided to place it there as the arrival of the second angel. Of course, uh, there's uh, Judges 12.12, 12. there's other doublings, um, but also just the whole nature of how we understand this line in, in relationship to what, what this line is in the way mark that it is in the line above it. And... Uh, when we uh, look at this again, you know, we're going to just go over that, make sure that we've done this correctly. Um, with Abdon, who's the son of Hillel, a Pirithonite, he judged Israel. He had 40 sons and 30 nephews. And these nephews we've determined are grandsons because it's basically a doubling of the word sons, and that rode on three score and ten ass colts. So these are 70 sons, obviously. And he judged Israel eight years. And then when he dies, he's going to be buried um, in Pirithon, in the land of Ephraim, in the Mount of the Amalekites. So, again, we don't have a lot to go on, we have a bit more than with Elon in that we have uh, the symbol of the 40 sons and the 30 grandsons and um, the symbol of the ass colts. And we've had this before in chapter 10 uh, when we have dealt with the is it Jair or Tola, one of those who had um, 30 sons that rode on 30 ass colts. Now, um, so we've so we've addressed that symbol uh, there uh, as well, and um, let's see here. So we're just going to go over to the chart. And we talked a little bit about you know is this arbitrary and how we put these lines together. So one is we can see we can we can create these lines. We can see that Ibzan, Ilan, and Abdon 
is this December 25th, 21 uh, empowerment of the second angel's message. And then we took um, Ibzan, Elan, and Abdon. We, we expressed them as a single line, though um, we know that if we go into each of these way marks, we could expand them as a line. But when it comes to placing these on these lines, um, we noticed some things, of course, some of the symbols of the names, uh, the gematria of it, the periods of time that they um, judged Israel. So the 7, 10, and 18 gives us July 18, 7, 10, and 8, seven years, uh, you know, is also a symbol of uh, the 25, 20, 10 years as a symbol in itself, and eight years also has a symbol in itself. The tenth we saw was uh, representing a remnant, and so we didn't apply it as universal kingdoms there. Um, and that has to do with the division that happens with December 25th, 2021, which is the arrival of the second angel. So the, there's lots of things that we've looked at here. Um, the span of time that we've given, uh, the connection to April 5th, 2030. And, um, and how did we connect this to April 5th, 2030? We saw that in the second uh, message, we had uh, some symbols there. That's the 16th uh, or 1629, which is presented in the February 12th, 2022 presentations uh, by um, Odilio, and it's going to be 49 days after Colin's presentation on December 25th, 2021. And of course, this, this whole line is an expression of that December 25th, 2021 way mark, the empowerment of the second angel. Um, the 2688 may be somewhat obscure, but this is when we looked at this number, uh, it was connected to November 24, 2022, the Thanksgiving, and there was uh, lots of things in that study that led us to look at um, the significance of that date. And then we noticed its connection to April 5, 2030. That is, it's 2,688 days from the Thanksgiving in 2022 to April 5, 2030. And when we looked up the number 2688, uh, the main thing that shows up in a Google search is an application for additional extension of time relating to uh, certain filings in uh, the American tax system. And so that symbol, uh, 2688, becomes uh, an extension of time. And and this is all in connection with, um, if we look at this entire line, we got December 6, 2020. That's going to be um, the starting point for this line in that we have three messages and there's this first message from December 6 that's going to test and, and come to this uh, conclusion. Um, so we have... February 24th, 2021, that's going to be the formalization of a message that arrived on December 6th. That is, it's the publication of a paper uh, that addresses December 4th, 5th, and 6th, the three days in Nehemiah and Ezra that apply to that history. And that's going to be 80 days after December 6th. And then 220 days after that is going to be a situation where I'm basically kicked out of the American group. Um, and that's a 300 days from December 6th. So, of course, the symbolism there of 300 is pretty obvious. And then we have, um, following that, we have December 25th, 2021. And that's going to be the conflict I have with uh, Colin, though I don't per personally have a conflict with him, uh, but it's perceived as such. And part of it is it's because of what happened on October 2nd, uh, which already there was prejudice against me, but um, what happened on October 2nd led to, I think, 
the, the greater likelihood that people would speak out against me asking Colin questions. Because, of, you know, you've had whatever it is, many days go by and people are um, much more, I guess, bold in, in speaking out because of what happened there. But we know that this is an arrival of another message related to time, and this is going to be formalized with Odilio's paper right, seven weeks later. And then uh, from Odilio's paper, we're going to have the symbol of the 1629, which is going to be applied to November 24th, 2022. And then we're saying that Abdon, December 25th, 2022, one year to the day after um, the end of our 777 structure, uh, we're going to have a third message arrive. And this is going to be related to, of course, the first day of the 10th month, which is December 25th, 2022. And in the line above, we're going to see that Samson is the January 11th, 2023 date. So we looked at Colin's study um, and showed that the end date of his, um, which is symbolically the first day of the 10th month, uh, relates to this December 25th, 2022 date. And Colin marks this anniversary, but we also have um, uh, on that date. So, if I'm, yeah, see, and that's what I was trying to remember. On December 25th, 2022 is when um, uh, how did that happen? So it's on the 24th that we're going to have December 25th. 24th, we... So what, what happens there on December 25th? That's what I'm, I'm getting confused about. Uh, in, in the studies that we do... Um, so I'm just going to look back here. Anybody remember what year? Which year? The anniversary? Yeah, the anniversary. So um, I'm just trying to remember exactly the. Uh, you I, mentioned something about the self same day referring to the 25th of the fall of the preceding year. Right. So this was, I was doing this study at that time on the self same day. So so this is this anniversary date. Um, so on December 25th. So that, it, I'm, it, haven't we reached the conclusion that an invitation must be extended at that time? Mm hmm Yeah, so... We study this, we start the lines simply presented. <laughs> Sorry. We began on that date. Um, yeah, so there was an invitation made. That was the, the idea. So we admitted, made an invitation the previous year, right, in December 25th, 2021. And that invitation was rejected. And because of what we came to study, we, we recognized that we needed to join once again with uh, these other studies. And we did that on December 24th and made an invitation for the, the studies on the line simply presented on December 25th. Um, and so the divorcement begins there, right? It's the first day of the 10th month. And then we're going to have. Yeah, I just want to. Sorry, Theodore. I want to bring up. I'm confused about the 749 days from December 6, 20 to December 25th, 22. And because beneath that chart, you've got 1872. Yeah, that 1872 is um, just 52 times 36. It's in that line. Yeah, because the constant bands can't be the same. Right, so it's it's just connecting it as a symbol. Fifty-two times okay. equals eighteen seventy-two. I'm connecting the grammatria for Ibzen and Abdon, 
So that's not a span of time. It's just symbolically um, connecting those two. So, I mean, I could have right. probably had an arrow connecting them. Um, so that that's the reason there. But yeah, I know it, it can be confusing. You could think it's that many days. But it's 749 days. Is that thing coming down? Um, do you want to just put some tape on the one side if that's coming down? Sorry about that. Some technical difficulties. A bit more tape. There you go. I taped up one of the lights and uh, it's coming down. Okay. <clears throat> So, yeah, so the 1872 is just a symbol there connecting the gematria. Then we, um, so we have these different dates. The 20th day of the ninth month in 2020 happened to be when they published the declaration. Uh, we know the 20th day of the ninth month is December 25th, 2021. But then December 25th, 2022 is the first day of the 10th month, which is that symbol that marks from the book of Ezra chapter 10, um, the beginning of the divorce proceedings that end on the first day of the first month. So April 5th, 2030 is you know, the first day of the first month, right? So that's the period of time that we're given for this divorce proceedings. And we can see how this is connected to this application for the additional extension of time. And we can see how that applies then uh, to the divorce proceedings on December 25th, 2022. Right. So this is a period of time that's been given this movement. Now, you know, again, we don't know what that April 5th, 2030 date means, it may just symbolically represent um, that time has been extended for us in order to go through this process. And that process could go through more quickly than that, but it's still there and it's been given to us in many different ways. So when we look at Abdon as this third message, we just have it as the arrival of, of the third message. Now, the symbols we have associated with Abdon are um, the 40 sons and the 30 grandsons and the 70 colts. So what would be the significance of that in relation to the events in our movement regarding December 25th, 2022, and the first day of the 10th month, and Colin's prediction and Odilio's? Um, so we can see that the second message is announcing the third message, right? Behold, the bridegroom cometh on the 10th day of the seventh month. Still not holding up. Okay. <clears throat> so... Any thoughts on, on what these symbols would mean in connection with Abdon? So what's the 40 and or the 30 and the or the 40 and the 30, right? So it's presented in that way. So he has 40 sons and 30 nephews. So why 40 and 30? Could they be spans of time? Okay. Um, well, just in a simple idea of four and three, why, why do we see four and three in scripture? So four, um, fourth generation. Right, so the progressive destruction of four. Three, uh, three angels' messages again. Oh, 
Yeah. So that represents a reform line, right? Whether it's four and Logical. three, thirty, right? Um, now three score in ten. I mean, three score is obviously uh, three times twenty, right? So score is twenty. And then 10, of course, that makes 70 altogether. Um, now, sometimes you'll see in the Bible that it's it's written as uh, three score and 10, and sometimes it's written as 70, but it's still the same word in Hebrew. It's just 70. So Hebrew doesn't write it as three score and 10. That's just uh, English. And just leave it. It's probably be okay. It's just, uh, you know, an English expression. Um. And then, of course, this relates to the ask holes, right? So you have uh, this symbol of, of the ass. So that's going to be a symbol of Islam. So what do we do with this? This is the third angel's message arriving, which is related to December 25th, 2021, as um, the way mark that this line is on, right? So this is an expansion of that, but this is December 25th, 2022. So it's a symbol of the Sunday law, December 25th. It happens to be my 40th anniversary from when I was baptized, but there's other December 25ths um, that we have in scripture. So what do we do with this? Any ideas how we can address Abdon and these symbols, these numbers? So spans of time. Now, we had looked at the spans of time um, related to uh, other lines. So we're, we're going to do this here. So somebody can just uh, help me out a little bit. So we're going to go to the calendar converter. Just leave it. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here. So we're going to put in these dates. So the first date we have... The first date is um, going to be in 2020. That's going to be December 6th. And so we, we've already dealt with that date. We know 80 days later is going to be the formalization, and another 220 later is going to be uh, October 2nd. And then we're going to have December 25th. And then we have uh, 49 days later, you know, February 12th. And then we're going to have um, November 22nd, or 24th, pardon me, that's going to be the Thursday. I'm sorry, what? What? What did you say? You said November 22nd, and then what did you say? No, it's 24th, Thanksgiving. And then we have the 25th. Okay. So now we have this chart, right? Oops, made it too big. So here's the chart of the dates, and you can see the spans of time. So one is you can see from November 20, uh, 24th, if we go back, to December 6th, it's 718 days. That's a symbol of July 18th, right? And we can see the 749 there already. You can see the 300. Um, and you can see from December 6th, 2020 to December uh, 25th, 2021, see how it's 384 days. That means that that year, uh, the Jewish year there had been a leap year. There have been 13 months. That's uh, 
um, what do we call it? It's an embolisbic ear. It's a, a common, so it's a common refers to, so it'd be a, a regular embolismic ear. Um, you have a deficient if it has 383 days and a complete if you have 385 days. So, so you can see that that's why that number's there. Anything else that we see? We can see that 84 days from uh, October 2nd, 2021. So that's going to be um, what happens with the American group, right? Uh, where I get in a conflict with Mark Johnson. And then um, 84 days is how many, that's, what's the significance of 84? One. Oh, it says seven times twelve, and it's on on the eighteen forty four on eighteen forty three chart. Yeah, so seven times twelve. So, I think it's interesting that between those two conflicts, we'll call them, is a period of, of twelve weeks. Right. Can you try again? Twelve weeks. Yes, conflicts. Uh, Mark Johnson and Colin. How is that tied into 7, 12, and 84? Oh, it's 84 days between those, which is 12 weeks. 7 times 12 is 84. Okay. Um, and then we're going to see uh, there's going to be uh, 49 plus 84 is uh, 313. So that's going to be 19 weeks, right? So that's, so if you're looking at these, a lot of these are Sabbaths, not all of them are. Obviously, November 24th is a Thursday because it's Thanksgiving. Um, and uh, anything else? Any other symbols that we see here? Nothing else? I mean, I would think, um, obviously, the, the July 18 symbol from November 24, 2022 is pretty significant. And when we ad address that symbol, so if we just go here, <clears throat> so we're going to have, I'm um, just going to put some of these spans of time in here. So this is going to be 31 days. Uh, I guess I'll put it below. And the 31 days, the significance there? 31 AD. Right. So it's the midst of the week symbol. Okay. And, and then we're also going to have uh, a span of time over here. This is going to be 12 times 7. Uh, 
Okay. So that's significant. And then we had, um, from the beginning of this line here, I'm just going to follow this. This is an actual span of time. To here. Okay, so you got that many days. And you can see then you take that July 18 symbol and you add the midst of the week study and you get 749 days, which is 107 times seven. So that means this whole period of time then is 107 weeks. So we should put that 49 days in there as well. We've had it other places. Any more thoughts? So in, in placing these dates in these lines, we haven't we haven't created these lines because of these spans of time, correct? No, this, uh, we got those after you laid the dates out. Right. Yeah, and I didn't look at these beforehand. Uh, the only one we knew beforehand is the 49 days because we'd done that other times, but I'd never looked at, at these other spans of time. Um, that I know of. I don't think I dealt with uh, 718 days from December 6, 2020 before, even though we had the November 24th date in another chart. Um, and that chart was uh, dealing with 1629 weeks and days. So we have the symbol there. So you can see it was the 1629 days from June 9th, 2018 to November 24th. So that's one of the ways in which I came to see the significance of November 24th, 2022. It's also 273 days from the start of uh, the war between Russia and the Ukraine. And it's 1,629 weeks uh, dealing with the New World Order speech, falsely attributed date, but nonetheless still significant. Um, so you can see here, I didn't put in the 718 days. I didn't put in the December 6th, 2020 date. So I, I could probably add that to this chart. I have July 18th in there, um, but I don't have, have the 718. Okay. Okay. So... Are people satisfied that, you know, when we construct a chart in this way and we look at our history and we've taken this way mark, Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon, those three judges, we create a line that's based upon how we understand the line above. So that's why we've given these main arrivals of each of these judges in our history. And then we looked at these symbols and constructed this line and then analyzed it. Um, are people satisfied that that is a proper way to construct a line? And does this help us in our understanding of where we are now that agrees with what we already understand? so that it, it's giving more light for our feet. And would this be helpful for people in the movement 
to see how we constructed these lines. And would this line be a witness that would uh, bring conviction potentially, or would it be something that would just seem very contrived? Well, <laughs> when you first present it, you know, people are just kind of look at it and go, um, what? Until they start inspecting it. And, and one of the things that I found during my inspections of it, I get lost sometimes. The, um, the symbol and how we came to it, and what necessary, I mean, not necessarily how we came to it, but what it means. Now, I mean, the 220, we, we, we got that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what about... 12 times 7. Now, you presented another um, slide with the world stuff, and then you had a little tiny um, Time Magazine thing on it. And boy, as soon as I seen that, I'm like, oh, I know what that date is. You know, and I know what that's about. But, you know, when you first pass it and look at the date, it's like, what? So for me, my mind works off of a different way than other people's, that 12 times 7. That equals the 84, right? Um, we've seen that on the chart, right? Yeah. So for me, it, uh, to make it, you know, impact me, I could almost see that, that calculation sitting on the chart, sitting right where that is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, as far as uh, 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 one of the little details, so it draws people's um, minds right to what it is okay yeah and so turn off your mic because you're your parents i'm sorry but um uh so when we look at the, these dates so so one of the things that that i've noted is colin's charts and our charts now colin has dates that are valid and and he's analyzing dates correctly and that is he notices a bunch of things but one of the things about our charts is that they are represented as a reform line. Now, yesterday afternoon, we did a study on the, the reform lines as they were understood back in 2015. And uh, in 2015, uh, in the notes that I provided, it was a study by Parminder, but it was just standard understanding. It's just nicely organized. Um, He's using each of these arrival, formalization, empowerments, along with some of the things we leave out, such as the laying of the foundation, um, the work of the enemies, the number seven, all these different things that uh, we traditionally had in our lines um, for quite a long time. Like even in 2010, when I came into the movement, we would have had that. Now, what what came about as time went on is we we started to understand Millerite history more clearly, adding, you know, the midnight cry as a symbol attached to August um, 15th, right? And also the first day of the fifth month. And then later midnight to the fifth day of the fourth month and July 21st. So we now had 217 as a symbol of midnight. And then even the application then of the first day of the first month to the arrival of the second angel's message in Millerite history and placing 9-11, not just as the empowerment of the first angel, but as the arrival of the second angel, right? So, so our understanding of the lines was heavily impacted by this understanding of Millerite history. And as time went on, we began to abandon these way marks in, in the way that they're illustrated here, right? And now, the ironic thing is that that is, to a large degree, the responsibility of Parminder. So Parminder presented standard understanding in this movement in 2015, once he's ordained as an elder in 2016. Uh, he begins to move more boldly. And and it could be, this is just me guessing at a person's motives, but if it's true that he had been planning this for a long time, 
that in 2015 he was merely uh, basically playing the party line so that he would be accepted. He wasn't he wasn't trying to stir the boat after what had happened in 2012. Stir the boat. That'd be stir the pot. Um, I'm not sure what the boat has to do with it. I understood you. <laughs> anyway, um, so then um, we start to see that he he dismantles this whole structure with his agricultural model and the different models that he tries to propose. And it's also a little bit ironic because he attacks Chawatu's use of Psalm 23 to create the lines, claims that Chawatu is destroying the lines, but actually what Chawatu was presenting was actually enforcing what we understand because it was helping us come to a realization that we had different lines in our history just as there are different lines in every reform line, and and particularly uh, Millerite history, that we can look at Millerite history and understand these lines in our history if we we apply what uh, Chawatu had said. So his studies on Psalm 23, I think, were really important, uh, but Parminder attacked them as destroying the lines when in fact they were supporting the lines and Parminder was the one destroying the lines, right? So, um, so now we can look back and see that much more clearly. But I was, I was really sad with what had happened to Chawatu because um, even though he was maybe a little bit arrogant, but because uh, he thought he was Samuel Snow, but <laughs> um, he also didn't respond well to being attacked, which is not a good characteristic. If you um, if you're led by God, you should be resilient uh, to attack because one is God put you there. So, um, so that wasn't really a good characteristic. But but the thing is, what he presented was true, and and I saw that, and I was just couldn't understand why other people could not. But um, but that's what happened anyway in 2017. So so now we have these lines here. And so if we were going to look at these lines, if the way that we have structured everything, because you know I'm planning how I'm going to put together my notes for the camp meeting in the summer, and um, you know I'm. I'm and I want it to be the simplest presentation I can do. That is, I need to show people how these lines are constructed. I need to bring them through the process. Um, and so um, I, I think that we really need to look at the history of how our lines were structured and where we went wrong and how then the Book of Judges has helped us um, get back on track. Because God gives us the light at the time that we need it. And so we definitely, where we have this um, construction of this ephod, uh, let's say we're going to call it that, dealing with these charts, um, we don't want them to be a stumbling block. So one thing we do need to remember about the lines is that these are analytical tools that God has given us to understand the events that we're passing through as a movement. You know, I would not make the argument that this is primarily how the book of Judges should be understood. Right? Like, the book of Judges is not directly, you know, written just for our history. Though, we know that that the prophets write more for our time than for their own. But we're not, we're not suggesting this is the primary application of Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. But when we look at these parallel lines, when we look at what happened in the past, it's quite remarkable that these symbols will apply so directly to our lines, right? Right. 
so uh, you know it, it's it's amazing how God has um, put all these things together. It is it, you, you can't manufacture these. You couldn't you know build a supercomputer that could uh, then um, create these structures and all these dates and put them together in this way. It would it would be impossible because the odds. Um, of these things happening by chance are greater than the number of particles in the known universe. So no computer could ever compute um, what, what it is that, that we have found. Um, so, so there we are, we have this line and with Abdon, we still haven't applied all the symbols there, but we can say that uh, the 40, and the 30 relate to lines, right? And that really what is presented on December 25th, 2022, at the beginning of the divorcement, is this study on the lines simply presented. So all of these studies that we have had, they're all part of, you know, God unfolding to us light. And so the dates in which these studies begin and other studies happen are, are quite important. Now, um, just another note here dealing with dates of studies. So one of the things is when I was originally gonna construct this line and put the dates, I actually had different dates chosen. So when we went through this yesterday morning, we ended up going in a different direction than I intended. So I didn't intend to put February 12th, 2022 there and November 24th. 2022, um, which is a good thing that we did, but I didn't intend it. I, was, I didn't consider November 24th as part of this line, just with how I had studied it. Now, now, part of it is I assumed that there would be more in, because this line begins with December 6, 2020. So we're going to be addressing on February 24th, with the formalization of the message, the events of that weekend from the 4th to the 6th. I have a paper on it, right? Um, that's published on February 24th, 2021. And that paper um, is um, comparing this to Ezra and Nehemiah. So we got the 20th day of the ninth month. That obviously comes from the book of Ezra. And we have three days in Nehemiah as well. So I look at these three days, what they symbolically mean, um, and that's the formalization. Now, when we have this October 2nd, 2021 date, um, why, why is it that we choose that as the empowerment? And, and the reason that we give is that December 6th, that there is a spirit that is manifest on December 6, 2020, that is again repeated on October 2nd, 2021. Now, remember the 220 years, August 29th? How did Jeff apply that? August 29th, 2019. Uh, something to do with the Pope coming back to power? Well, it's, yeah. So the, the Pope dies August 29th, uh, 19, um, or 1799, right? In captivity. And the papal spirit is revived on August 29th, 2019, when Odilio, Stephen, and John Mark are brought before the papal tribunal of um, Tess, Parminder, Tabo, Marco, and probably some others. Um, I would assume uh, there at that time, I'm trying to figure that out. I think Bronwyn would have still been there. I don't remember specifically when she left. Uh, she left at the very end of the meeting. So she would have been there in uh, 
August 29th? I believe so, yes. Yeah, because that's what I understood, that she was part of that um, uh, rebellion there at Bail Pure. So um, anyway, uh, so we have this restoration. So Bronwyn's going to be there at December 6, 2020, right? Obviously, she's the, the main leader at this point. And, and the spirit that she manifests is going to be a formally rebuked, I guess, with the formalization of, of that arrival of that message. And then 220 days later, it's going to be uh, repeated. So uh, we could maybe liken that February 24th, 2021 date to uh, the February 15th. I don't know. The, yeah, so sort of like the February, anyway, to 1798 and the 220 years. Um, somehow connected there with the 220 days. I don't know how to explain it. But what we see is that that this is, again, a manifestation of what happened on December 6, 2020. The movement was acting exactly like FFA on December 6, 2020. Correct? Agreed. Yeah, yeah I agree. And, and the conversations that went on that day, I have the recording of, of what people were saying about me, um, which was completely inappropriate for any Christian to utter about another person. Right. Uh, it's what I call schoolyard talk, you know, after a fight. You know, as, as a question. Yeah. Can we also draw the parallel to what Mrs. White was shown? 1888. Uh, yes. Yes. That, and, and I did draw that parallel. So Ellen White saw that sort of talk that went on in 1888 in private, the kind of talk that makes the angels weep. Um, so, you know, we have to be very, very careful how we talk about others, and especially in this sort of mocking sort of tone. I mean, God is allowed to mock. We are not. I mean, under special direction, you know, Elijah is going to mock and, and so forth. So there is a place for it. But the type of personal sort of uh, mocking that goes on, this is not just not a Christian behavior. Right. We are we are not to tear down our brothers and sisters. Yeah. Or are we not instructed that we are to love <laughs> as we would want to be loved? Yeah. Yeah. And and we shouldn't treat each other worse than the church treated us over the 2520. But indeed we have. So so we have to be careful about it. And and, and we have to seek, you know, what I even in all of this. It's, it's seeking the restoration of, of others, right? So no way is this me, you know, calling out people and condemning them and talking about them in, in, in doing this. It's just this is our, our situation. This is something that we all have to own um, because we all have done it, right? So this isn't just, oh, those are bad people and we're good people. Uh, we have to know that that we've been uh, infected with a spirit of criticism that has to be addressed in our personal lives. And that comes from our lack of connection with Christ and trust in him. So, so it's significant that you have that 220 and, and this 300, all these symbols, right, with those dates. And then, of course, December 25th, 2021 being the 20 day, 20th day of the ninth month, it, it's creating this, this structure. And we have other structures like this that uh, where we can take a repeated date, an anniversary date, and, and mark them like this. We haven't gone through many of them in detail. Uh, but even if you look at the Levitical chiasm or you look at um, uh, the March 27th date, in 2019, 2020, and 2021, uh, the structures there, um, we, we can actually create these same types of structures. We can put other dates in there and mark them these way marks. Now, the thing is, we haven't always done this. That is, sometimes we've created lines and we didn't mark 
the seven way marks like we're doing here in the book of Judges, which I think is a little bit unfortunate that we we stepped away from doing that in creating a line. Um, I remember there was a criticism that Tabo made regarding my July 18, 2020 prediction is that I wasn't using this model. Um, but actually I was, I just didn't explicitly show it. Um, and, and part of that was because they're very complex. That is, there's lines within lines. And, and in some ways, I didn't know exactly how to express it. But here in the book of Judges, when we created this line, we can clearly see that this isn't artificial. This isn't an arbitrary picking of dates. Um, because of all the multiple witnesses of structure and time between these events and their connection necessary connection with this idea of what the darkness is that is being addressed and where this line is as a way mark in the line above being the empowerment of the second angel so we had some very um objective evidence both in the line of jephthah and in the line of ibs and elon and abd now, the line that we're going to have more difficulty with uh, because of its complexity is Samson. Samson has many lines. Uh, he's a type of Christ, but an ironic type. And um, we had trouble when we went through Samson to really sort out what that meant. How do, how do we relate to all the different symbols in, in Samson? Um. So when it comes to doing these studies in, in July, when we have our camp meeting, um, you know, again, I'm going to try to keep things as simple as possible. But that, and I'm going to have the charts of all the different lines nicely illustrated. But the focus is going to be on understanding how we understood the lines in the past, how they were dismantled. And, um, and how we came to uh, look at examining these lines in this way, how we came to find these structures and, and how we can recreate them. Um, but it's gonna also come, to, the focus will come to Samson. So Samson's, the, his, the story of Samson, his way mark uh, to me is the most important at the present time in how it relates to what's coming. And that makes sense based upon uh, this symbol of the 10th, uh, the first day of the 10th month um, that relates to the story of Ezra. Now, part of the problem is we have a lot of background information that needs to be understood, right? That is, you know, if we're presenting th this information to people in this movement, who haven't spent the last few years in this sort of detailed study that we have been doing, um, it could be easy to lose them, right? So one is we need lots of prayer um, and, and also obedience in our personal lives. And, um, we know that only those that are really searching will be reached by what we're presenting. And that is, we believe that this light that has come to us in these morning studies is essential for this movement, right? Which is not some arrogant statement or anything like that, because we see its light and we can see how it answers all of these problems that this movement has and it answers the problems in our own lives and and so we have to seek uh, in every way possible to make this information accessible to others and that's that's something that God is going to have to do as we cooperate with him he can use us but this is definitely not I mean, these lines weren't created by us. They were created by God. So, 
So we can trust that if God has given us this light, that he's going to um, lead those to it who are most going to be benefited by it. Now, just an, another note in our now in our morning studies, we've been getting pretty good attendance. And uh, but I watch, you know, the number of views on the videos. Now we have over fifteen hundred videos on my YouTube page. Um, so it's pretty hard to expect that people are going to be able to uh, watch all the videos. Right. So to go back, you know, and watch all of the studies that we did leading up to what we're doing here, um, a person has to have enough time. And and there's also the whole history of this movement, the whole history of Adventism, the whole study and understanding of the Bible. Um, we understand so little of God's word. We've read so little of the spirit of prophecy. We know so little of our history. And, and we really need to recognize that, that our understanding, even though it's, it's incomplete, with God, he can help us to understand the things that we need to understand at the present time, right? He's always going to give us sufficient light to follow him each day. But if we neglect the personal study, if we sort of kind of drift, trusting that, well, other people are studying, everything's going to be okay. Um, I'm just going to, you know, choose to follow this person or that person, or I'm just going to, you know, wait and see what's going to happen. Um, we're on dangerous ground. Right. I don't know which metaphor would fit in Pilgrim's Progress, but, you know, Enchanted Ground, there's the place where he falls asleep. Can't remember all the, the names of everything. But um, but we can be on, on Enchanted Ground, right? That sort of self-delusion that, that we can, that we, we just convince ourselves everything's going to be okay because, you know, even though we're not going to spend the time to do what God asks us to do. So there's lots of work ahead um, for all of us in our personal studies and lots of work ahead in preparing for the camp meeting. But when I look at these lines here, what we've seen over the last couple of weeks, I think these are very powerful witnesses. If a person takes the time uh, to help us um navigate through what's happening in the movement at the present time. And now I haven't watched all of Colin's presentation from the previous Sabbath. Um, but the one thing I can say in, in what I have seen is I'm not, I'm not satisfied with how he's presenting his arguments. And I'm not satisfied with, the structures that he has. There's lots of light there, things that need to be examined by this movement. And my suggestion to Colin was that, you know, we need to study together. And, and I'm going to try to make that happen, that Colin and I can spend some time studying together um, prior to the camp meeting, whether I have to go there and study with him or whatever we're going to do. Uh, but we need time to, to study together. And, and um, you know, the, the studies that he does, the Saturday night studies, I don't feel very comfortable in, or in, even in the other studies, sort of engaging with Colin, with everyone else. Just because of what's happened in the past, and maybe that's a mistake on my part. But I don't, I still don't feel like I can just speak freely. But. I don't know. So people need to pray for me in that regard, whether, you know, I'm just uh, not um, not brave enough or something like that. I don't know. Well, it, it's not so much being brave. I mean, the, the point right now has been that 
a lot of what you've sought to do in the past has been rejected out of hand. Mm -hmm. And very few of us would really relish the idea of having this to go on again and again. Mm -hmm. So that's agreeable. At this, you know, at this point, I commend the position that you're taking. I hope that it's received in the spirit in which you're offering this. And I would, I would recommend that all of us pray that as Theodore makes this offer to Colin, that it is accepted in in the manner in which it's being offered and not dismissed as so many other things have been dismissed over the last few months. So that, that really is a challenge for all of us that are currently attending these meetings. Yeah. You know, and cause you know, my, my fear, I mean, cause as we look at these lines, we know we're heading towards an upper room, but not all are going to, doesn't mean that all of us are going to come together in that upper room and, um, experience the outpouring of the latter rain on this movement, right? <clears throat> so, you know, I've tried to be cautious all through this whole history, not just since December 6, 2020, but even the whole time I've been in the movement, um, that I believe God leads a movement, not individuals. And it's kind of tough to be sort of singled out in a sense to to have to do things where i would much rather you know be meeting with people and having consensus and and making decisions together right uh, i mean it's easier making decisions on your own but it doesn't mean it's better so you know i don't you know me planning a camp meeting for instance it's just it wasn't going to happen any other way Right. There's no uh, no ability to, you know, to sit down with all the different people and say, hey, let's have a camp meeting. What do you guys think? Um, there just isn't that spirit of cooperation at this point. So, I mean, if somebody else planned a camp meeting, that'd be fantastic. But there just isn't the... Um, the ability for people to work together to do that. So, yeah. So, you know, I've been actually thinking about that whole thing um, a lot. And maybe we should get together and talk about that in a, another environment. Uh, talk about what? The camp meeting or what? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The camp meeting. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't want to take up the time here of the study. Yeah. yeah. But the main thing is I did approach them. What's the best time for a camp meeting? Right. And people gave me sort of the, the period in which they felt it could happen. I mean, obviously, you can't plan a camp meeting that's good for everyone, time-wise. Um, but that was just an invitation, basically, for them to be involved in planning it. But there definitely wasn't much interest in, hey, this is a good idea. We should have a camp meeting. How are we going to do this or anything? There's still not that much interest. No, no. So I, I don't expect um, lots of those people to come, but, but there's probably going to be a lot of people coming that we just don't know about, that we don't expect. I uh, think as long as we document this, this event thoroughly, um, it'll be able to um, enlighten others that may be a little bit um, afraid of breaking from the pack. Yeah. But, but, you know, this is, I believe the point that I'm making here is that I believe that God is giving us this light for a reason and it has to be shared. And yes, sir. And even if it's just that we get some nice, simple, organized videos that are a little bit better than uh, these in-depth studies that present it up in, in a simpler manner with different speakers presenting uh, different aspects of what, what we've learned um, that would be something that's easier for people to decide, okay, I'm going to watch this series, right? 
I mean, this is study, whatever it is, uh, 316 of understanding the lines. Well, that, that seems pretty daunting for a person to say, okay, I'm going to watch that series uh, over the next, uh, you know, six months, watch two a day or something, um, you know, dedicate three hours a day to studying these in-depth studies, right? So it's obviously not going to happen for many people. It's just like, you know, the, the last paper I wrote, people just look at how many pages it is and, and don't even want to get started. So you know, I have to learn to be a bit more concise. But sometimes you need all the detail. I mean, we definitely personally need it as we go through this study. Um, we couldn't have come to these conclusions if we had just done some presentations once a week uh, on these things. We wouldn't have. No way. No yeah, way. Yeah. No yeah. We wouldn't have hardly any understanding of, and hardly any light it would have come. So the time needed here that we're looking at just to create this line. This is what we did. It didn't take us very long to create this line. We, we spent a lot of time talking about it, but it's been a few years of study at least that has enabled us to put together this line in this manner, right? So this is the product of years of study, hours and upon hours of study, personal study and group study that allows us to do this. So when we deal with Samson, which I think is the main, the main thing that has to be presented, um, because it's so involved, uh, we really need to have that um, correct. So, you know, correct, simple, straightforward. And I think that we can do that now. I don't think we could have done, we couldn't have put Samson on the line in, in, in this way, um, you know, a year ago. We wouldn't have been able to do what we're doing. So we couldn't have created these lines before. So we're going to start looking at Samson. So just, um, and this I think is going to take us a little bit longer than what we did with Jephthah and Ibsen, Elon, and Abd. But uh, we've spent a lot of time studying Samson already. So we've been through Samson twice. And now we're looking at him again for the third time. <clears throat> right, and remember what we did is we went through, when we first went through Judges, um, that was primarily with Dwight leading out, going through these detailed notes, right? As I remember, yes. Read. Yeah, and then we went through it again to just create the, the line of the judges itself. That was the second time we went through it. And then, yes. And then this time in going through it, we're actually creating the individual lines of each of the judges, right? So right. This, it's a pretty thorough way of studying the book of Judges. And then, of course, we're going to go through it again, you know, in, well, I'll be, be doing that in writing my notes, but also then in presenting it um, in a public, more public forum, forum in person. And um, so, you know, what we finally come up with what we finally, how we finally come to understand our present history. I really believe that there's, there's still a lot more that's going to become very evident very soon. And, and so I'm trusting that, that as we come to understand this light, we will come to understand it at the very time we need it, at the very time that this movement is ready to receive it. And we don't know how long that's going to be, right? <clears throat> okay, so let's just get back into Judges here. So the birth of Samson. So if we're going to construct a line, um, remember this line here, we, we talked about constructing it uh, before, but we didn't construct it. Um, 
But when we construct a line, I mean, a birth of someone can be quite, um, so I'm just gonna show you here what we did. Um, so, um, so here's what we did before. So we, we didn't construct the lines in the way that we did uh, with Jephthah and that, but we did construct a line and um, and these lines had to do with uh, November 9th, right? So we go back to November 9th and we see that November 9th is September 11th. So we're going to recognize those symbols there that bring us back to the beginning of these lines that we got from Judges chapter 2. The Judges chapter 2 in Gilgal, right, where the Holy Spirit is, the mighty angel comes down at 9-11. That's going to be... Judges chapter two, verse one is going to be 2001, right? And then we're going to have uh, all the way up to 2023 in chapter two, because we're going to have those verses matching those years in at least a general sense. So when we, we looked at Samson, I mean, we're going to have here, this one has a center, Judges 13, 13, as July 18, 2020. And it's going to have these uh, spans of time. Um, um, all of these these things about these symbols that we have here. So we we've already fleshed out these symbols. So I suggest, um, you know, I mean, I, I probably could send an email just with some of these charts that we worked out with Samson, uh, so people can kind of review them before we start putting the, these on a line. But we already have. A lot of these events marked is, is the main point. I'll put them on an the email if you can. Yeah, I'll, I'll just put put these okay. charts in an email uh, today. Um, right. so people have them and they can refer to them in their personal study. Um, so there was, was oh man, there's so many things that we found when we looked through uh, judges. And so here, you know, we have some of these these verses and these dates, um, the lion and the honey, the different things that happened to, to Samson, chapter 13, 14, and, you know, and on, uh, that we definitely can, um, you know, we can just almost take some of these charts and just mark, well, where are the way marks? So, um, so that's one of the points. And then here we just have, so I think that was the main chart with Samson. Um, you know, he just he ends up being this third angel's message arriving, but it's going to be here. So it's just basically these two charts that people need to have. So these, uh, I'll send, send this out to people. And they can look at it. Um, But anyway, we know that when Samson's born, it's going to be uh, connected to a waymark. But it's it's a little more complex than that, right? Because one is we know that Samson is a type of Christ. Um, so, you know, it's not just going to start here with the birth of Samson. There's going to be uh, the children of Israel are in apostasy, right? They're now in the hand of the Philistines. And this 40 years. So remember, we had this 40 years as a symbol that relates to the 40 years in the wilderness. Um, but there's other specific things regarding that as well, because um, we can connect it to uh, the period of the manna. And then we have um, this man of Zorah, or the family of the Danites, right? So Samson's of the tribe of Dan. We know that Dan is not in the list in uh, Revelation chapter 7 of the tribes of Israel, because he's a backbiter, right? And, and, but you have this man of Zorah. His name is Manoah. His wife is barren, and bear not. And you can see the parallel here 
to the story of of um, of Christ to some degree, but even here, almost really with John the Baptist, right? Uh, you got this Nazarite type of thing, which we have with Christ as well. But it's sort of like the story of John the Baptist and the birth of Christ are sort of symbolized here in this birth of Samson. And But, you know, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. And we can think of Isaiah chapter 7, right? Um, a, woman shall con a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which we know, of course, uh, represents primarily in the, in the first application of it, uh, Manasseh. So, so we can see even here there's these ties to the 2520. Um and then this, this is going to be this Nazarite vow, you know, no razor shall come upon his head. He shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Right. And we even deal with the chronology of this. How old is he? When these different things happen, Stephen addresses some of those things in his chronology. So these are going to be useful things when we um do these studies just to have an understanding of how this chronology works, where Samson fits in. Um, so all of these things are basically going to occur before his birth. So we would then need to know what that means. Why is there this, uh, this story that starts before the person's born? Uh, it's like the life and times of Tristan Shandy. It's not a, not a true story, um, but uh, uh, the author uh, never gets to the birth of Tristan Shandy because every Shandy because everything is a uh, um, basically he's he's just giving the background information. It's he keeps uh, changing topics, which it's not what's happening here. But when we think about the birth of Samson, there's all of this stuff that happens before. So when we have a reform line, uh, one thing that we can say is that we actually have more than one reform line here. Right? That this is not just a simple, just like in the life of Christ, Christ's reform line, his line, I mean, there's there's a personal line of Jesus. There is the, the whole reform line of the time of Christ. There's, I mean, there is even a reform line that would start with his baptism, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so these, and these things were not well understood in this movement, even in, even in 2015 or 16, probably not even, even still today that, um, that there's multiple reform lines, but the way to understand them is that um, there's sort of like a family tree of reform lines. You have your main reform line and you have these branches coming down, uh, seven branches, right? Each branch itself is a reform line. And, and so we haven't, we haven't had the, the knowledge or understanding to discern each of these reform lines. And, but that's what we have to be able to do with the book. of. That's Samson. what we're just picking up on here in the last, you know, mm -hmm. two, three years. And the last specifically the last few months, we started really um, the light. It was like somebody took the, the basket off the top of the lamp. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because even though I've understood these things for a long time, uh, we've definitely seen them way more clearly than we did before. And, and a big revelation was that 11 9 is 9 11. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and understanding that the book of Judges is a zoom into the second angel's message arriving on 9 11, not the first angel's message being a powered on 9-11 and this that, gives us a, a closer or a better definition of what zooming in is actually all about right 
Yeah, because we, we had the concept, but nobody knew how to apply it. Right, right. And so some of the things that Jeff did were actually on the right track um, in understanding it. But it was Parminder's work that really dismantled any hope that the movement was going to uh, sort through it. Right. So getting rid of Parminder's ideas uh, was really essential. I know there are some people that I talk to and they still think, oh, there's a lot of light in what Parminder was teaching. Um, some people like his parable teaching and, and things like that. And um, I, I saw those things as, as satanic. So uh, I have a hard time accepting that what he was doing with parable teaching uh, had any light in it. Now we know that, that truth and error often combined. Um, there is a truth there, but that truth is not so much in the parable teaching because that was where they could reconstruct or make up these stories and they're valid, even though we just made up, it's like arguing, arguing by analogy. It's, it doesn't mean anything. It has to be founded on something. And um, what we can see is that in a sense, what the truth is, is when we create these laws, Times. we are um, setting up this pattern which comes from a structure that is being implied in a parabolic sense, right? Right. Okay. And that, that when we analyze and we create, a, we say, here's the darkness and here's this arrival of a message and here are the way marks that mark its formalization and empowerment. And here is where the second message arrives that is derived from that first message. And here is its formalization and empowerment. And that leads to this third message that's inherent in the first message. That what we are doing is we're creating these stories that are analytical of things in the past that relate to the present. So in some sense, that would be the true parable teaching um, where this counterfeit was basically built upon the whims of, uh, of man rather than coming from the word of God, right? So that's why I say it was satanic because it was the type of spiritualism that you could just create your stories and because you created them and they're a parable, they are therefore true as long as, you know, Parminder and Tess agree with them, right? So, so this was not a, um, a good thing, right, what he was doing. But the other thing really had to do with these models. So as I said, with Achawatu, he had a model that was based on Psalm 23, which Parminder rejected. But Parminder created his own models and forced... Uh, the lines to conform to his conception of these models rather than looking at the scriptures themselves and deriving the model from the scriptures. So uh, especially when it came to the harvest model, it was just, um, he was applying it incorrectly. So that I was not a fan of that harvest model and how he was addressing it because then he has the harvest when? When did he have the harvest in his model? Anybody remember? He has it after the close of probation. I believe that's correct. Right. So, so we know that um, the harvest is the harvest of souls. That that harvest that you know that's talked about in the Bible is not something that happens after the close of probation. Now, there is a harvest of, you know, you're going to have the wicked destroyed and the righteous gathered in that sense. But he was mixing together these lines and forcing upon, because there's a harvest there, there is, really isn't a harvest earlier, right? So it was, it was really confusing for people. But anyway... 
The point is, when we look at these lines, what we can see is that there is sort of a truth in how we can take a model, but the model that we have is, is Millerite history. That's our template. And, and Millerite history is, is a little more complex than we understood. That is, each of the way marks does have a reform line built into it. So there are many reform lines in Millerite history, especially with the primary, you know, Miller has his own reform line. Samuel Snow has his own reform line. And, and you can also apply a reform line to James White, uh, to Ellen White. Really, every one of us has a reform line. Some of ours are, you know, they're, they're not a big reform line that, that fits into uh, the structure of our movement that everybody needs to study. Um, but they can mean a lot to you personally. And they can relate to the lines, especially when it's uh, those that are unfolding those lines have dates connected with them. And um, to understand what that means as far as how God is leading an individual and their understanding of things um, and how that fits into the bigger picture of the message that's being given, all of those things are important. So, so anyway, we're going to finish here. Uh, but I'll, I'll send out that, that chart. People can study it. We're going to start looking at how we're going to create these various reform lines in Samson. And then we will, um, you know, it'll take a little while to get through them all. Any final thoughts before we close with prayer? that aren't going to take long. <clears throat> you on the move again today? Um, yeah, I have to go to work today. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I'm not particularly in a super duper rush, but I do have to have breakfast before I go to work. So um, I don't on Tuesdays. So, so Tuesdays and Thursdays are better for that. Can I make an observation from yeah. um, Sabbath? Yeah. So uh, when I when I gave a uh, call on the line that we did on Jephthah. Um, yeah, Jephthah. The, the Jephthah. The biggest the biggest reaction to it was um, <clears throat> there was a conversation that went on about the lines um, and their inability to see, you know, line upon line. They kept seeing it as one straight long line. And I, I, I agreed with them that it is one long straight line, but inside those, that one long line, there are little lines that are segments and they may even overlap each other um, mm -hmm. as they're going along. And there was, you know, there was a lot of going back and forth, um, but at the end, I felt that uh, we were on the same page when we're talking about these different lines. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. Well, thanks for that. So let's close with prayer. Dear father in heaven. Thank you for the study this morning. Help us to continue to understand these things. And um, we pray Lord that uh, um, you can be with those in the movement who are searching, help us to be a witness. We pray for all the studies and that your Holy Spirit can be present. Be with each person now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.